Hello there guys and welcome to video number four on our video series visualbasic.net for the absolute beginner. We've already covered properties, moving properties between controls, we've already looked at subroutines and we've looked at functions. Um, in today's video we're going to be looking at creating a brand new project. We're going to start a project for our calculator and we're going to create a module and we're going to create a function on that module and we're going to see on how we can call that module and that function on it and therefore looking at the scopes of proper uh, scopes of our subroutines and our functions so um, stay tuned and I'll see you after this Okay, so in today's video, what we're going to do is we are going to create a brand new project. And the reason for that is because as we introduce new, new features, new functions, and new concepts, we're going to be using them as we introduce them. So it, it kind of explains itself. Uh, it makes things much easier and quicker for us to go through. So in this case, I'm going to create a brand new project. Uh, create a new project. I'm going to go for Windows Forms. And I think what we're going to build is a a bit of a calculator, a small calculator. So we're going to go call it my calc. I am going to save it into my YouTube videos and I'm going to leave the framework as is. Click OK and start the new project. Now that we've created a new project, we need to have a bit of an understanding of naming convention. So what we need to do is we need to learn how to name things properly. The reason for that is because once you have a bunch of controls on your form, you don't want to continuously go to your form to look what you've named a control. So logical naming is a key part of development. In this case, I have a form and this form is called form one. Now we don't always want to have the form called form one. So we can go and change the form's name in the properties. Let me just move this out of the way. So in the properties, we can see this is form. Its name is form one. However, if I change the form name here, it will not change the class name. What I mean by that is if I double click on the form, at the back it says form one. This is class form one. But if we want to change form one on the form itself and on the class, what we're going to do is go to the actual form, right click and go rename. This is going to be um, the calc and once we've pressed enter your renaming file would you also like to form the rename function for yes and now if I click on it you can see that this is now called calc and if I double click on this it is now class calc so that's how you rename a form if you want to rename the entire form plus its um, its classes you can just go and rename it in the actual Solutions Explorer itself. Okay, so in today's video, I would like to introduce something new, and this is called a module. And a module is basically just a file that contains functions or subroutines that you can reference from anywhere within your project. To add a module, all you can do is click on Project and Add Module. I'm going to call the module calculator process calculator processor okay now that we've added our, um, our module let's go and create a function on it I'm gonna call this function add so we're gonna go public function add as integer And every function would need a value to return. So we're going to go dim our results as an int. And we're going to return our result. Now, even though the result's got no value at the moment, we can still say that it's going to return the result. In this case, let's put a comment in there. Return the result. And here we declare the results. Okay, now 
for us to be able to um, add two values together, we would need to pass those two values into this function. So I'm going to go in into this add, I'm going to go by vol, vol1 as integer, by vol, vol2 as integer. Okay, so that will allow us to pass two values into the add function. Uh, what we can do now is tell the result to update, update the result. And we do that by saying the result is equal to value one plus value two. And there we go. So basically this is what you do to add a function or subroutine onto a module. Okay, let's move over to the um, form itself. We can add a button and I'm gonna double click on this button and I'm just gonna show you quickly how can we access that specific function. To access this function, all we need to do is we need to call the, the, the module by its name, so calculator processor. And you can see that it pops up and you can see that this is a function by looking at the icon on the right hand side. Click calculator processor and the moment I click dot, it, you can see that this function, again, a function is defined by that icon, a function calculator processor add, it's asking for value one as an integer, value two as an integer, it returns an integer. So I'm gonna go click my tab button. I'm gonna go value one comma one, close my bracket. And there we go. So what we've actually done is we are now executing the add function on our calculator processor. So that will allow us to pull back the value one plus one. What I'm gonna do is I am going to update the form me dot text equals what have I done? Equals one plus one. Let's give us a run. And now if I click this button, the, uh, the value, the answer is two. Now that we have a module and we have a function on it, let's talk about scope. Scope is very important. The reason why scope is important is because if I want to set a certain function or subroutine that will only be handled by another subroutine, I can specify that we can only access one of those subroutines. For example, if I take this function, which is currently public, if I look at our code, it allows us to access the add function because it is public. If I change public to private, the code still looks right. However, the calculator processor says, I don't know what you're talking about because I can't reference anything. So even though I click the, the, the even though I press the full stop and the IntelliSense normally tells us there is um, a subroutine or function that we can access. In this case, it tells us no, we can't. So what we can do is go back to our function and make that public and now the ad is back. There's a quite a lot of different um, scopes that we can deal with. Microsoft has got a, quite a nice list. I will add a list of all of the scopes at the bottom of the description of this video. And in this very simple basic tutorials, all we're gonna deal with is the private and the public functions or scopes for our subs and our functions. Okay, so we've d done quite a little a, a bit on the functions and on the subroutine. We now know that they have scopes. They could be public, they could be private. There's many other scopes as well. So you can share a friend, uh, a shared friend. Um, and all of these make these subroutines available or visible within certain classes or shared across certain classes. But before we go on too far with the code side, I would like to cover the layout of a form. How do we define the layout of a form? Well, Microsoft has tried to make it very easy for us as developers to put the controls on and to tell the controls how to react once the page scales. So if the, scale, if the, the page goes bigger or smaller, 
these controls would have to react to adapt the way that we tell them to. So um, let's have a quick look at how this is done. Okay, so I have quickly just um, put two buttons on the, uh, on the form and these two buttons have both got a property called anchor. So let's see the anchor property. Because they're two different, let me just go and change one of them to left and top. Okay, so what does the anchor do? The anchor property is almost like a magnet. So if the anchor property is set to the left and to the top, then if the form rescales, the controls would stay to the left and to the top. For example, if I run this form now, you can see that it looks like they're in the middle, but if I maximize the form, they may went to the left and to the top. If I restore the form, they go back to the middle. Okay, now let's do one of them top left, and the other one, I'm gonna do button one, I'm gonna do top, top right. Now when I start the form up and maximize it again, you will see the button two stayed to the top and the left and the button one stayed to the right. Even though they stayed within their own height from the top of the form, they actually moved left or right based on our preference. You can also scale controls with the anchor. So for example, I'm gonna take these two buttons, I'm gonna snap them to the right hand side and to the top. I'm gonna to make sure that both of the anchors are top and right. Just by clicking those top right. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a panel control. I'm gonna change the background of this panel control to something we can see better. Maybe that blue. And then I am going to snap it to the left and to the top I'm going to drag it until it snaps onto the buttons and then I'm going to click on it and change the anchor property from top left to top left and right. Now this will tell the control that it has to scale left and right on the form. Okay, let's give it a run, give it a quick um, expand it and as you can see it now scaled it now took up all of the real estate um, from the left to the right until it touched the buttons as we as we drag them across. Okay, so that's just the basics of the anchor button. Um, another quick tip would be if I took the two buttons, for example, I put them in the middle of the form and I take all of the anchors off. Okay, come on. Take the anchors off. None. Then We've taken all of the anchors off, then if we run the form, maximize it, you can now see that these buttons stay in the middle because there's no anchor. They don't know what to do. Okay, so that is how we anchor our controls on the form and that's how we tell the controls where to go, where to stay on the form, especially when we resize the form. Okay, um, I think that is quite a long tutorial for now. Um, we will pick this up on the next video and we will do a layout for calculator. We will also go to our processor and add all of the functions that we need for add, multiply, divide and subtract. And we're going to put some buttons on there and give it a bit of a, a calculator layout. We're going to change some of the properties of that and we're going to do some basic math with our calculator. So until I see you in the next video, have a good evening. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and ring that notification bell. Speak to you later. Cheers.